Australia. Known for its sandy beaches and hot climate, this is a country of extremes. From the blistering deserts and tropical savannas of the Northern Territory to the coral reefs and tropical rainforests of Queensland, Australia provides a mosaic of habitats. As one of the world's mega diverse countries, this island's continent provides a home for thousands of species found nowhere else on Earth. With almost 35,000 kilometres of coastline, Australia isn't short of stunning coral reefs. But the most famous of them can be found just off the coast of Queensland. This spectacular natural creation is the Great Barrier Reef, and it is home to over 9,000 species. A popular tourist destination, the Great Barrier Reef extends for over 2,000 kilometres and consists of 3,000 individual reefs. Corals are potentially one of the most unusual animals that live on our planet and are one of the most unique due to their symbiotic relationship they create with algae. Whilst the coral protects the algae and provides it with nutrients, the algae in return provides food and oxygen for the corals and the two live in harmony. The algae are also the reason for the coral's vibrant colours, which make them even more magnificent. But this relationship is extremely fragile and relies on certain conditions to thrive. As sea temperatures rise due to climate change, this relationship starts to fail as the algae begin to produce toxic chemicals. This causes the corals to quickly expel their usual occupants, leaving just the white coral structure behind. This is known as bleaching and it is estimated that at least a third of the Great Barrier Reef has experienced serious damage from this process in recent years. This is truly devastating news for not only the reef, but also the world's biodiversity in general. The Great Barrier Reef is a haven for six of the seven sea turtle species, as well as providing a home for sea snakes and over 1,500 species of fishes, including the largest fish in the world, the whale shark. The whale shark is a true giant, with some individuals being known to reach 20 metres long. But despite their size, these sharks do not feed on other fish, preferring to feed on plankton instead. This means to find enough food to sustain their 11 tonne bodies, they need to travel vast distances. One slightly less gentle inhabitant of the reef is the crown of thorns starfish. Many would believe starfish are somewhat inconsequential animals, minding their own business and slowly feeding on any debris they find. But these starfish are a major threat to the reefs, gorging themselves on the live corals. Home to vast flocks of herons, petrels and terns, Heron Island, as it is known, is found at the southern end of the Great Barrier Reef. The entire 42-acre island is protected as a marine national park, with the island being a hot spot for nesting turtles, baby sharks and shovel-nosed rays. Back on mainland Queensland is one of the largest regions of tropical rainforest in Australia, the Daintree Rainforest. Along with other rainforests on Australia's east coast, this is one of the oldest rainforests in the world, having existed for 180 million years. The forest is made up of around 3,000 plant species, making it one of the most biodiverse regions in Australia, and deep within the forest is a place which is known as Cassowary Falls. As its name suggests, Cassowary Falls is home to the endangered southern cassowary. The southern cassowary is a large flightless bird which is synonymous with this part of the world, with a range spreading throughout Australia, Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. Along with other flightless birds, such as the ostriches of Africa and the rheas of South America, cassowaries are known as ratites. These modern-day dinosaurs share a common ancestor from the supercontinent of Gondwana, but when this landmass began to break apart 180 million years ago, these birds were isolated from each other, and this caused them to start their own separate evolutionary lines. Now three species of cassowary are found across Oceania, but the southern cassowary is the only one to be found in Australia, spending its days foraging for fallen fruit, fungi, insects and small vertebrates. But like many species in Australia, the cassowaries are negatively affected by feral animals that have made the country their home. Combined with road building, threats from feral animals have caused cassowaries to become endangered. Further south lies a national park with slightly different fauna. The 15,000 acre Springbrook National Park isn't a major hotspot for many of the larger and more characterful animals that draw many to Australia. Instead, a rock arch called the Natural Bridge is home to one of the most unusual draws of this wild country. The bridge was formed over millions of years as the waterfall eroded away the basalt rock and the cave that is created by the bridge is home to millions of glowworms. The glowworms are the larvae of a species of gnat and most of its population is here in this one cave. Glowworms, as their name suggests, can produce their own light. This fluorescence is created by a chemical reaction within the glowworm's body, but why do glowworms glow? 
Glowworms are actually skilled hunters, and the light they produce help them to catch their dinner. The glowworms will hang sticky silk threads from the roof of the cave, and the light they emit lures their prey towards these threads. The reason they make their home in such remote caves like this one is also linked to their chosen hunting method, as they must find a location which is out of the wind, otherwise they risk their threads becoming tangled, making them completely useless. But when food becomes scarce, these threads are ignored entirely as the larvae will become cannibals and start to feed on other larvae, pupae or even adult flies. Fraser Island, also known as Guri, is just over 120 kilometres in length and is the world's largest sand island. The sand of the island has been collecting in this one place for around 750,000 years, becoming stuck on the volcanic bedrock. Whilst the island is now known under its traditional name, given to it by the Bracella people, the island was also known as Fraser Island, after Captain James Fraser. Fraser became shipwrecked on the island, and sadly he later died in 1836. Despite the entire island being made of sand, it is still home to more than 865 species of plants, which make up a range of habitats such as eucalyptus woodland, mangrove forests, wallum and peat swamps, sand dunes, coastal heaths, and is the only place in the world where rainforest grows on sand. Due to the entire island being made of sand, there is no rock to form the hills which can be seen across the island. Instead, these hills are created by sand blowing. There are roughly 36 sand blows across Guri, and their dunes can move up to 2 metres per year and grow to heights of 244 metres. The system on Guri is also the world's oldest dune system, dating back 700,000 years. Ground made of sand means that tarmac roads are not something really found on the island. Instead, a 75-mile beach that runs along its east coast acts as a main road as well as a landing strip for planes. You may wonder how this doesn't go incredibly wrong when aircraft and land vehicles wish to use the beach at the same time, but drivers have been instructed to give way to any aircraft attempting to land. Between 25 and 50 species of mammal call this island home, including echidnas, potteroos, sugar gliders, fascagales, bandicoots, flying foxes, swamp wallabies, and most famously, the dingoes. Dingoes were once common on the island of Guri, but now their populations are decreasing. This is worrying as the dingoes here are some of the last pure dingoes in eastern Australia. Conservationists have started many measures to save this crucial bloodline, including banning domestic dogs from the island. In 2015, the the dingo population on Guri number between 150 and 220. Not only are these dingoes some of the last pure bird animals in Australia, but they are also unique as they are specialists in hunting in large packs compared to the smaller packs of the mainland populations. These large packs are efficient hunters, and the only place swamp wallabies can hide from the dingoes is in the dense undergrowth of swampy areas. The swamp wallabies are usually found alone, but when feeding they will come together in groups to eat shrubs, pasture and crops as well as a range of other vegetation. The species is also known to tolerate the poisons in many plant species which could kill many other animals. And one of these plants which features in its diet is hemlock. If a human was to eat hemlock, the chemical compounds within the plant can interrupt the nervous system, causing the respiratory muscles to become paralysed, which eventually means that we would die from respiratory failure. 74 species of reptile live on Guri. Among them are six species of highly venomous snakes, including the eastern brown snake. Other herptiles include guanas, geckos, skinks and frogs, with there even being one species of skink found nowhere else on earth. Some frogs on Fraser Island have also evolved to tolerate the acidic waters of the island's freshwater lakes and have earned the name acid frogs. Like many regions, the island can be badly affected by the annual wildfire season, with the 2020-21 season having the worst effects for this island. The island held the record for the longest burning fire during this season, with the flames burning for over two months, causing half the island to be blackened by flames. This entire catastrophic fire was started by an illegal campfire on the 14th of October 2020. The island wasn't deemed safe for visitors until the 15th of December, but even at this point fires were still burning in some regions. Barungaba or Montague Island is the second largest island that can be found off the New South Wales coast. The only island larger is Lord Ho Island, which used to be the native home of the Lord Ho Island stick insect. This species was believed to be extinct for decades before it was rediscovered in 2001. The only population of these stick insects left can be found on Balls Pyramid, which is a small islet found around 12 miles southeast of Lord Ho Island. 
the population of this islet only numbers around 24 individuals, and these stick insects are believed to be the most endangered in the world. Montague Island, however, is famous for a slightly more charismatic resident. The island is home to approximately 12,000 little penguins. These penguins have thrived as there are no foxes or feral cats on Barungba, and the only predators on the island are other seabirds and seals. As of the mid to late 2010s, there are now believed to be two species of little penguin. The New Zealand species, which is not known for forming large groups and can be only found in New Zealand, and the Australian species, which is the one found on Montague Island. It is believed these penguins form these large groups as a method of protection from predators. And the New Zealand birds don't form these groups as they were only introduced to terrestrial predators relatively recently. The distinct blue feathers of the Australian species give it its other name, the blue penguin. Being the smallest of the penguins, weighing only up to 1.5 kilograms, the species could also be referred to as the fairy penguin. As well as the penguins, the island also attracts a range of marine mammals, as the East Australian current brings fish and squid towards the island. Around 125 kilometres from Melbourne, Phillip Island gives the mainland natural protection from tides, currents, waves and storm surges. Accessed via a concrete bridge, the island hosts the largest colony of fur seals in Australia. The most common fur seal found here is the Australian fur seal. These are the largest fur seals in Australian waters, with the females weighing up to 120 kilograms and the larger males being triple this size. But despite their large size, the fur seals will often lay close together, if not on top of each other, in the rocky regions of this 26 kilometer long island. Cetaceans are also recovering in the waters around Phillip Island, with populations of southern right whales and humpback whales bouncing back, and killer whales seen. The seas around Phillip Island are also home to endemic Barunan dolphins. Only around 180 individuals make up the entire species, which is not yet accepted by large mammalogy organisations after first being proposed as a species of bottlenose dolphin in 2011. Located 150 miles south of the Australian mainland, Tasmania is the largest of Australia's islands, and many of its species and subspecies are distinctive. One of the unique plants of Tasmania is known as the Australian beech, is the only native temperate deciduous tree in Australia and is only found here. The fauna is just as exceptional, with 12 species of endemic birds and famous being home to the now extinct thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger. The thylacine once roamed not only Tasmania, but also mainland Australia, until competition with dingoes caused the species to go extinct on the mainland around 3,500 years ago. These marsupials finally lost their fight against hunting and disease in 1936. The extinction of the thylacine left the Tasmanian devil as the largest carnivorous marsupial in the world. The Tasmanian devil has one of the strongest bites compared to their body size of any predatory land mammal in the world. Biting plays a crucial role in their behaviour, as males will fight for females and will fiercely guard their partners to prevent infidelity. But this aggressive behaviour has also started to become their downfall. Since the late 1990s, a disease known as devil facial tumour disease has drastically reduced populations and now threatens the survival of the species. The disease is spread through bites, but vaccination offers a slight hope for the recovery of the species. Sibling rivalry starts at birth with Tasmanian devils, as whilst the female gives birth to up to 30 young, she only has four nipples. This means that only a handful of these tiny newborn joeys will survive. Named for the distinct subspecies of kangaroo that can be found here, Kangaroo Island is also known as Carter Pintinga, or the Island of the Dead. The Kangaroo Island kangaroo is a subspecies of western grey kangaroo and is smaller, darker and has longer fur than its mainland cousins. 171 kilometres southeast of Darwin in the Northern Territory, Kakadu National Park supports a range of mammals, birds and reptiles. Goldian finches, for example, are only found in Northern Australia. These finches can eat up to 30% of their body weight in seed every day and are perfectly at home in the hotter climate of the Northern Territory. But these finches are at risk from wildfires and late dry seasons, which decrease the availability of tree hollows in which the finches breed. The National Park is also home to the red goshawk, potentially the rarest bird of prey in Australia. The goshawks will nest in an exposed fork of a tall emergent tree, and will feed mostly on other birds, but may also prey on mammals, reptiles and larger insects. But one somewhat unusual resident of the National Park is a rather large bovid, an Asian water buffalo. Introduced in the late 19th century, the buffalo have since established themselves as a persistent feral population. As we have now found, marsupials have become the rulers of this land of extremes, filling many of the roles the placental mammals would across the rest of the globe. 
Its diversity is vast, from its habitats to its species, but much of its land is being cleared for human activities, and this means Australia's wildlife is losing its home. But it's not only local scale threats that are threatening Australia's diversity, as Australia has been one of the regions most affected by climate change. However, efforts are being made to protect areas for animals and plants, and ensure that at least some of this wild land stays wild. Music